meeting. Just so everybody knows, that's normally what Rick does, and he asked me to do it. And I've identified everybody that I can that I can find, so it's in your hands, sir. Alrighty. Uh, I guess Bill uh, Burns. I don't see his name on the roster there, so maybe he'll he'll come in a little bit later here. Uh, Rick also said he may be calling in from the airport. He has, a, I think it's a 6:30 flight to London, so uh, he might be at the airport. I don't know what kind of yeah cell phone web connections you might have. Um, so, uh, Jake, did you go through? I just dialed in now, but it looks like it's Bill Franklin, Eric. Uh, Eric was twice, actually. Uh, Jim Harrington, uh, Lynn Sierra, me, and Sylvester Mann. Is that... Uh, is that uh, yep. yep, that's what I have. All right. So I small. didn't twice for some reason. Yeah, because you pinned to a phone. When you pin your phone, it shows up as the w on the web and as a phone. Yeah, never done that before. Yeah, I don't know how I don't know how to how that happens, but it, but I've I've seen you do that several times in the past. Okay. So. Are you, uh, Eric? Are you using your uh, computer's audio system, or are you using a cell phone to talk? Cell phone. Cell phone. Yeah, that's why it's so you're talking through the cell phone, but you're in the webinar through your computer. That's why you're seeing it twice. Right. Um, anyway, Mr. Sal. Um, so uh, there was a, a new person that was going to initially, I think, uh, call in, uh, but then uh, I got a, a notice from Rick that he, uh, he had an uh, ongoing commitment on Mondays at 5, so he wasn't going to be able to do that. And then I think I did get a note from Rick about Jim, Jim Harrington. I think he wanted to talk a little bit about anemia and prostate cancer and ADT and so on. So is that correct? Uh, yes, that's Jim. Uh, yes, I'd, I'd like to ask a question or two. Probably, yeah, yeah, so that's that's one question we have. And then otherwise, everybody looks like uh, the old guard here. So I'm not sure that's just going to be more than just a lot of updates on what's going on. So uh, unless there's something else really pressing, uh, Jim, do you want to ask a question around that? Uh, sure, sure. Um, the... Um, the question about anemia with respect to prostate cancer, or really any cancer, but of course prostate cancer, and I, uh, concerns me because I'm anemic. And um, I, um, I'm on this special trial, and we don't need to go into that with pembrolizumab and listeria, but there's not any evidence, this is what they're, they're, they're looking into, that this trial, that these drugs are giving me, have any relationship to anemia. So what's happened is, my hemoglobin has gone down. And for a man, you know, it's about 12 and a half to 14 or so. Well, mine has never been real high. But um, it's dropped down as low as 7.4, mm. which in, in my reading of it, and I know, Steve, you'd know more about anemia, but it's nothing to fool with. I mean, I mean, yeah. I thought, well, I'm just a low. But no, you, you get some fatigue, you get the shortness of breath. But putting that aside, um, what's happened is that low uh, hemoglobin count has um, has caused problems. I, I cannot go and continue the trial, which is of interest now to me because it, my PSA is going down, but I cannot continue the trial unless my uh, hemoglobin is nine. So what's happened for two times now is that I've had transfusions, uh, each time two units of blood. And having that, at, say, late in the afternoon, by the next morning, my, my hemoglobin pops up. I mean, it, boy, it works. The first time, wow, I, I sort of came alive in some ways. You know, you, you get your fatigue starts to drop off. Um, you don't get shortness of breath. But then it happened again. And went essentially the same numbers. And once it goes over nine. But what worries me is, and what I'd like to ask all of you, and cause, because anemia can occur with chemotherapy too. It's quite common. I know there are a couple of drugs that can be taken. Um, but I, what I've read is that there's only one ultimate way to solve anemia problems is to give blood, which doesn't sound like a really good solution given that this particular protocol I'm on is two years. Oh, my God, I can't even imagine taking blood every three weeks um, beside the danger of transfusions, the cost of this thing. So far, I haven't paid anything for it, but um, it just does not seem like a very good situation. So my question for everybody is who has had to deal with anemia, if there's anybody on the call that has, what have you done about it? I mean, yes, you can eat red meat, uh, not good for prostate cancer, 
Um, you can eat raisins and dried fruit and that. But um, has anybody had this problem, dealt with it, has had transfusions? Uh, any, any suggestions for me? Um, so it's a little concerning. Uh, let me let me just start, and we can kind of throw this open. So, yeah, uh, sure. so anemia is, is you know blood count, is, your red blood count is one component of what's called a CBC, a complete blood count. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, frequently the, the red component is either hemoglobin or hematocrit, and they're almost mm -hmm. the hemoglobin is about one third of the hematocrit. Uh, so you sometimes hear somebody say they have hematocrit of 35, which equals a, a hemoglobin of around 11 or 12. Oh, I see. Um, okay. So okay. Those, those terms sometimes are confusing. Um, the other components that I frequently talked about, especially in, in talking about cancer chemotherapy or radium treatment and so on, things that suppress the bone marrow, uh, are the mm -hmm. white blood count. You know, so mm -hmm. when you hear about an, an absolute neutrophil count, an ANC or white blood count that's low, that's a wholly different thing than a red count that's low that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but. But it, that's something else that can occur. And then the third component is something called platelets, which are a mm -hmm. critical uh, clotting component. And generate okay. platelets be over about 50,000 in order for you to clot correctly. So mm -hmm. I guess the first question I have is, is it just anemia where your blood red count is low? Yeah, or it's just the it's just the red. You know, you, you caught me off guard with that question. I don't know my hematocrit. I don't have those results in front of me. Um, but they always point to the hemoglobin, what is that, the H? Yeah, HGB. HG, HG yeah, um, as being low and as being the um, particular um, the blood that is causing me this problem and not being able to go on until they get it up higher. Yeah. Um, so and as far as I know, it's just that one. And, and I have not had, I've never been anemic. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's been 12, something like that, 12 and a half, maybe 12.4. But until, which, which is what puzzles me, is why is there a possible connection with this trial that I'm on, the drugs that I'm taking, which by any stretch of the imagination, um, the pembrolizumab and the listeria, particularly listeria, it's never been done before. If you haven't ever given it to humans, how do you know? that they're, 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 they're trying to find answers. There's eight centers doing it, but so far... Uh, they can't find it, but it had, did not start um, before the trial. So, um, but what can I do? I don't know enough. They don't know enough. Um, it could throw me out of the trial, I suppose. You know, I don't know what they're going to do. I hard to imagine continuing to re, to receive transfusions. Um, no, that's not um, a, that's not a solution. I mean, that that seems like that's beside the uh, the cost and and the danger of doing it. I mean, it, I didn't know this, but you can get the wrong blood and die. I mean, that's what they told me. Well, uh, that, that, that I'm going to die, but um, are you, are you, are you familiar Steve, with these drugs? There's two drugs that are used for anemia. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. One I is mean, a red bulletin and the other one is uh, more for the white cell component, which is either oh, okay. last, uh, uh, or nupogen. Um, the, I, I guess the way I, I look at this, and again, anyone else chime in, I don't want to dominate this, but uh, the reason people get anemic is because either you're not producing enough red blood cells, mm -hmm. okay, or uh, the red blood cells are being destroyed somewhere, typically the spleen uh, or elsewhere, mm -hmm. or you're losing red blood cells, as in the case of somebody with, for instance, a, you know, bleeding in their... Bleeding, you know, bleeding, yeah. Yeah, they, they mentioned that. Or, so those are the reasons that Typically, someone gets anemic, and you can work that up and see. Now, the other reason, of course, is, is a medication side effect, and it could be the pembrolizumab. That's, I mean, that could be certainly causing it. One, one thing that you might have asked is, have you had an erythropoietin level drawn to see if that level is high or low? What, have, what, you, have I had what drawn? What, what? There's a, a blood test. There's a, a substance in your blood produced by the kidneys called erythropoietin. Oh. Epoetin or erythropoietin, EPO. Oh, and, okay, okay. And that is what causes your marrow to increase the production of red blood oh. cell. Oh. And so if that's low, it, even in the face of anemia, it suggests that uh, it's not your marrow. It's something going on somewhere else here. If it's mm. very high, then it suggests, you know, your body's doing everything it can to make enough blood cells. Mm, so that's... I see. 
So, and if it's low, the other thing is you can give it. You can give that as an injection, and it sort of oh. pushes your marrow to produce more red blood cells. So the whole oh, thank issue you. of erythropoietin, what the level is, and if it's low, can you get an injection of that? Um, that would be my first question to your docs is, you know, is, am I producing enough or, and it's just being lost somewhere, red blood cells, or am I not producing enough? You're not pretty, the typical situation with bone marrow suppression from chemotherapy and so on is you're just not producing enough red blood cells mm. or, mm. or the prostate cancer has invaded the marrow with the bone mm -hmm. metastasis and it's, mm. uh, it's caused you not to have enough marrow because cancer cells have replaced the marrow cells. Yeah, and, oh, okay. Yeah, and I don't know that. The only, when I last saw my medoc, which was just last Friday, I just said, when I was talking about this, he said, when I asked, what's the cause of this? He just yeah. said prostate cancer. <laughs> it's well, pretty broad. I mean, we know I have that. Um, yeah. But I, I, I keep helpful. wondering, well, <clears throat> yeah, that's real helpful, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, the problem with these trials, this particular trial, is that they're getting conflicting results from various patients and PSAs are going up, going down, pain, bone pain is going up, going down. So they're puzzled. Um, I mean, in my case, things are pretty good. I'm somewhat of a poster child, I suppose, at least when one looks at the PSA, because my PSA is 2, uh, which, of course, but another guy, he's got 400, and went up to 650, back down to 400. So um, they, don't, they don't know what to do. The, the doctor is faced with taking you off a trial when you shouldn't or anyway I do appreciate your help um, I will find out I think that um, in terms of a diet I mean are you going to absorb much um, that's not red you know, blood cells from red meat I mean is it no, 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 you don't absorb the blood cells the iron in red meat in iron, iron. iron yeah because hemoglobin has to have iron in order for the body to make hemoglobin I would seriously doubt your problem is iron deficiency anemia. That oh, okay. would be something your oncologist would have said, you know, <laughs> right off the bat. Um, yeah, but, he, and I mentioned iron, and I mentioned, uh, you know, I'm tired. I don't want to eat a lot of raisins and <laughs> sort of silly. But he said, um, no, and I could take supplements. He said, no, I'm not going to take any supplements, and this is not the problem. So, um, okay. Um, you know, so you had really high PSAs. Did you ever see? Did you ever become anemic and? throughout the years? Just, yeah, um, when I was on the, uh, the dose chemo? of taxable from the chemo, oh. I dropped down to the, hemoglo well, the, the hemat hematocrit was about um, 28, 29, something like that, and the hemoglobin was about 10, and I chose to take a, a blood transfusion because uh, oh, uh, okay. I was sports and I was just feeling really tired. And uh, so Yeah, this, oh, it, it's, it's not, not fun. Yeah. You just don't feel your 100% bubbly self. You know, you really get fatigued. It really is true. And at 7.4, it's not good, you know. And I, and now that you're, was three weeks between transfusions, and it should have should have stayed up, I thought. So I'll, 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 if yeah. somebody's low 10, you, you start talking about transfusions. So, you know, that that's pretty low, 7. I mean, just to, just to, in my mind, to summarize, well, you know, I think what you need to do is find out, A, is it just your red cell line or are your white cell counts and your platelets also low? That's the first question, which okay. we it's your bone marrow. Um, if it is just your red cells, what's your erythropoietin levels? Okay, are they high? Yeah. Meaning, you know, your body is trying to pump out as much red blood cells as it can, or is it low, meaning that there's, you know, that there's just something wrong with your, your, your system that sort of initiates this cascade of, of, of things that happen when you're anemic to make more red mm -hmm. blood cells. So those are the okay. few things right okay. off the bat that I would ask if you know, the erythropoietin and, and about your white count and playlist. Yeah, um, I have seen that word before. I will do that. I will ask them. Um, they're going to have to do something, you know, and um, if, it, if it is Pembro or something like that, they, you know, the, the fact that you can research this and try to find out, but it's just no way of knowing. If somebody has to have had this same sort of thing, and I guess so far they... They don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. But I thank you very much. Uh, if there's anybody else that has any tips, otherwise, but this is I mean, that. I don't feel horrible. I just don't want this thing to, I don't want to have a real, I mean, there's all kinds of anemia. Yeah, and, um, I don't want any of these things and, and so forth. And I would like to stay on the trial because I'm dealing with the trial pretty well. And it seems to be possibly effective. So 
and uh, I've got I've got almost two years to go of this thing, so or, so I've, I've got to figure this out. But thanks very much, gentlemen. If anybody has any other tips, um, yeah, this is De this is Dennis. I can give you. Uh, I was getting a little concerned about my hemoglobin and hematocrit because it's at the low end. It's not below the low end of the range, but it's right right at the low end. Mm -hmm. Uh, both mm -hmm. of these uh, presently at my last uh, blood work. And I just checked back when I, just before starting chemo, both of these were well into the, the middle of the range, right smack dab in the middle of the standard range. Mm -hmm. And nice. they've been going down uh, since I had the chemo and I'm on the Lupron. So are you, are you still on the chemo now? No, I'm off chemo, but on Lupron. But I mean, is it is it are they going back up? The uh, no. Well, I'll, I'll be getting another blood work here in a week oh. or so. Oh, okay. But uh, the last at the last time, it's been gradually going down. The trend oh. is, is downward on it since uh, my chemo and uh, my ongoing Lupron. You have fatigue. And I do feel the fatigue and the tiredness and stuff. So I yeah. was wondering. Shortness of breath. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I got to get some good blood work done. Okay. Jim, this is uh, Len Sierra. <clears throat> yeah, hi, Len. Uh, I, I basically agree with everything uh, Steve said. Uh, I would add that uh, being an immunotherapeutic agent, pembrolizumab, uh, just like any of the other immunotherapies, can induce uh, autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Your body attacks its own cells because it's like a oh. hyperactive immune system. The brakes have been taken off. Now, I just did a quick search hmm. on anemia and pembrolizumab, and oh. it showed oh. that there there is at least one patient uh, who, after hmm. the third infusion of uh, pembro, developed uh, hemolytic anemia. That might explain the rapid hmm. uh, fall in your hemoglobin levels. Well, that's very, very interesting um, yeah. because yeah. rapid is the right word. I, um, hmm, I've had four. I've had four uh, infusions of Pembro. Yeah, you know, hmm. hemoglobin well, I, uh, is, is the common autoimmune uh, problem. So uh, hemolytic means the blood cells break up. It's extremely hmm. To diagnose that, you can do a hemolysis panel on your blood. So it, mm -hmm. that is a very good point. If if it is uh, an autoimmune phenomenon from the pembrolizumab, they should do a uh, autoimmune workup for hemolytic anemia. And if that's oh, okay. what it is, steroids can be used to help that. So that's a very good point. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I I I just seem to think. Well, I'm a scientist, and I guess I think this way, but that there's some cause and effect. That, I mean, I was doing, I was up around 12, 12 and a half, to say, until this trial started. I said, boom, well, not quick, but it's it's pretty quick, and um, it's a lousy feeling. I mean, the, and I don't take chemo or anything like that, and I still have this bit of fatigue and so forth, but um, I will look that up and see. I, Yeah, I mean, um, ultimately, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that, that rapid a drop in hemoglobin could, yeah, not, be pretty rapid. For, could not be accounted for by the, the typical uh, ADT. Uh, yeah, I, I have read about that. I'm still on Lupron, too, but um, yeah, we, the, yeah, that's what I've been wondering. Why did it go down so fast? Yeah, the ADT is just a gradual uh, yeah. uh, lowering of your H&H &H hemoglobin. Um, but something that rapid, it's got to be bleeding. Bleeding. Hemolytic. Uh, well, I wouldn't call it bleeding per se. I would call it hemolysis is more the breakup of your blood cells. And usually... Oh, oh. Oh, stuff. I see. But it's very, I, they, uh, very easy to diagnose. Oh, okay. It's not like you're bleeding out from your bowel. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, they suggested bleeding, but I, I'm, I'm not bleeding anywhere that I'm, I mean, and so I know, I know that. Well, thank okay, you, gentlemen. I really, really appreciate your, and I'll go and um, get some information, and then I, I really appreciate it. appreciate it, Steve, Dennis, and uh, Lynn. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck. Uh, let us know how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I will. I, I, I don't know. I mean, if, if this, if this Pembro is the thing, then that's obviously, a, unless they stop the Lupron, it keeps on happening, 
I'd probably just have to go off the trial. And then I think well, the next well, one probably some, be Zofigo. So. Jim, sometimes they'll give patients, when they have autoimmune <clears throat> side effects to these immunotherapies, they'll give them high doses of steroids to calm things down. Stress the immune system for a while. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> they don't want prednisone. Yeah, they get all worked up about steroids. They oh, really? no cortisone, no, no. Um, yeah, but you know, on the other hand, I hear you. Well, actually, I mean, you know, yeah, give me steroids and uh, they pump me up, make me um, feel real good. I suppose, yeah, give them. You know. Well, no, it's actually not to pump you up. It's the uh, uh, the steroids are used with checkpoint inhibitors like pembrolizumab. Oh to de diminish the autoimmune effects where it's attacking oh. your own body. In this case, oh, you're red. I see. So they usually will use prednisone, and that enables you to sustain a normal blood count because it stops the hemolysis. It stops the, the, your oh. own from attacking your red blood cells is the way I think of it. Oh, and okay. you, Zofigo, yeah, you, you, know, you need to have a hemoglobin of at least 10 to go on Zofigo anyway. Yeah. Well, I didn't, that, at the moment, we're going to stay with the trial, but you give me some good suggestions, ways that maybe we can counter if this is related to Pembro, which sounds like it might be, this whole, yeah. yeah. Because this last time, actually, I had Pembrolizumab and no Listeria. It's the, it's the way this trial works. Uh, yeah. So we can see, I mean, it's, I don't think it's Listeria. I mean, that's just bacteria floating around in me, which we kill in, after three days of floating around in me. Uh, but uh, autoimmune, that's a, that's a good one. I'll, I'll work on it. And if I have any questions, I will write Rick and I'll connect with you and write you an email. But I appreciate yeah. what you've told me so far. Yeah, the answer, you've got prostate cancer, it really doesn't say very much. No, no. But, I mean, I mean, uh, and then when I look, if you Google anemia and prostate cancer, well, it comes up with all kinds of things. You know, you can see that this happens, and uh, especially with chemo, but but this happens, and yeah, that's not the answer. No, but when your doctor said that, uh, well, you've got prostate cancer, that, that's just not an adequate answer. It's true. That's true. Much, much more than that, I think, for the anemia. So I would really pin them down on that one. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. Has anybody else joined the meeting here? We have, uh, about, I guess, only about seven or eight, I guess, is what I'm counting here. Anybody new to the meeting since we took a roll call? Peter has yes, joined uh, us and, and Paul Frieda. Oh, hi, Peter. And Paul Frieda has joined also. Great. Yeah. Great. And I don't know what happened to Eric. I think I might have screwed him up somehow. I. Yeah. I had him named incorrectly. I had I'm, Dennis named I'm as him. Here. Oh, okay. I'm still yeah, here. But, when uh, somebody okay. else was talking and it came under your name, Eric, so there is something amiss here. Yeah, well, I fixed it. It was it was Dennis, but okay. I fi I fixed it when Dennis spoke up. Great. <laughs> so we should be good. All right. So I guess uh, Peter, were you going to actually m moderate this, or I, just, I wasn't sure what Rick's plan was here. Peter, Kafka. Peter had a colonoscopy earlier today, so he may not be. Oh, okay, well, maybe that's not the, that's not the first thing in your mind then. Okay, so maybe we can just uh, just go down the uh, the list that I have here of attendees and talk about anything uh, anybody wants to talk about. Maybe make it a short meeting because uh, there's not that many attendees, and this is really the old guard. There's nobody here that I see that's new. So uh, um, start at the top, Jake. No, I really don't have anything, Steve. Okay, all right. And Bill Franklin? <clears throat> yeah, I was just wondering, um, so I, I've been on ADT for, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 months. <laughs> I lose track. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask a question about, like, long-term, because my fatigue level just keeps getting worse and worse, even though I'm, I'm supposedly near the end of this treatment, but. I just had that question. Uh, you can ask other people first, poll the people, and then come back, I guess. Well, it's not, I mean, I think we can just address the questions as we go down the list here because it's, you know, there's not so, that many people. 
If I were uh, if I were Rick Davis, I'd tell you you need to exercise more. Of course, that's that's what he. I do. Say. I do. I've been exercising all along, and I just it, it's getting worse. I'm still gaining weight, and I'm getting tireder and tireder all the time. So yeah, yeah. It, it's so bad now that I uh, initiated the paperwork at work to to scale back my hours. I'm going to go on 50 percent work time. Uh, thankfully, the other 50 percent will be covered by medical leave, but. Uh, I just in the afternoons I'm just not productive at work. I'm I'm dead. Hmm. You, are walking, you sure? I walk about three three miles a day. Uh, usually in earlier, so because in the evening it's tiring, and uh, I'm doing that man plan workout as well as uh, some other mild workouts too. Hmm. But uh, I've gained like six pounds in the last two weeks. I'm changed my diet. I'm still eating healthy. My wife won't let me eat junk food, so yeah. Is it yeah. possibly? I don't know. But, um, oh, I drink a ton of water every day. Okay. I drink at least six four ounces of water a day. Okay. Yeah, but uh, no. Uh, like I said, I see. I started in December 2015, so you know that's uh, a year and a half. It's. Yeah, it's been 18 months of ADT so far. Uh, had my last shot last month, so it was a four-month dose. He's not going to give me another one. He was going to do, like, the 18-month thing, but he cut the, you know, he gave me that last one just to get me over the hump past 18 months. So, and he can't tell me. So, also, anybody here started ADT and stopped ADT, what kind of a recovery time did you see from the effects? Is, like, testosterone coming back or the side effects lessening. I've not stopped it. I've been on it for about the same time that you've been on it. Um, but with my disease, I'm going to be on it for life. But it, generally speaking, I think, you know, once you go somewhere three to four months after the last, you know, if you, I'm assuming you're getting it every three months, uh, you're going to start to see the testosterone and the DHT, the dihydrotestosterone, start to climb up again. And I mean, you can actually do the blood test and see it. Yeah, any connection like what I have with NLR, you know, these features put them away at the time, you will not get them to the I guess. Do you to give to When we do the reporting, we will report by three separate groups. Hey, uh, is there someone named Caller 5 that's talking right now? Sorry, tell me uh, Is there someone who called in just now called Caller 5 who's talking, uh, not muted, or are you actually sick? Oh, you just muted. Okay, that works. Uh, I just well, I can't understand if the conversation is relevant to our discussion or if it's just background chatter. I think it's the TV. I, I just muted him. Okay, that's great. Thank that you. That's yeah. Better. So I mean, but my main question is, uh, you know, this these effects to me they they've been cumulative. So when I first started, for the first five six months, I didn't really feel bad. I had hot flashes, but physically I felt good. Mm -hmm. But then after that, it just started going downhill, and it's just continued that way. Um, I'm hoping now that he's giving me the last shot that uh, after about June or July, it it reverses. <laughs> but. Uh, well, yeah, you know, to see if that's true. I mean, it. I mean, th in theory, after three to four months, you should start to see your testosterone and DHT levels come back to normal again, um, or, or you can see how you feel. I mean, either one. Yeah. Uh, All right. Just wondering if anybody else saw those kind of effects over you know, fairly long term, over a year and a half or so. You know, I've been on it, like I said, about a year and a half, a little over that, too. And I, I have not, uh, personally, but I know Rick always calls it slow chemotherapy, you know, ADT. Because yeah. the longer you're on it, the more side effects. So I know that is true. Yeah. And fortunately for you, it sounds like you're done with it and can move on with your life. Yeah, Bill. Hopefully. This is, Bill, this is Jake. I, I, I've been on uh, Lupron for going on five years. 
And I did try right. intermediate a couple of years ago, or about a year after I started it. I you know, I tried the intermediate thing, and uh, right. the guy's back again. No, it's me. Sorry, guys, it's me. I'm trying to mute. Great. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, when I when I weight gain is definitely a side effect. Um, fatigue is definitely a side effect, and the longer you're on it, the more likely you are to have those those things. But when I did go off of it for, uh, I went off for about five and a half months before my PSA started going back up again, and I and, the, and like Steve said, the uh, my testosterone started to recover. I am probably going to be investigating within that period of time. So for what it's worth, you know, five six months is some people it does take longer. I understand. Right. Hey, Bill, how old are you? I am 53. Oh, you're young. Okay. Because I know that they say that the older you are and the longer that you are on ADT, the less likely it is that you'll recover your T levels even if right. you stop. Yeah, my, my, my urologist said that, and he said at my age, I was 51 when I was diagnosed, so he said, at my age, after you're done with all the treatments, it should come back. You know, we expect it to because because yeah. of you know mid fifties shouldn't be an issue. Right. Yeah, you should be in and good otherwise shape. Health, otherwise healthy. You know, my doctor my my doctor told me you know when I first was diagnosed, he said you're perfectly healthy except you have prostate cancer. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Geez, great. You should come you know, back. great blood pressure, respiration, weight. You know, I was you know fairly active. You're in great health, except you have prostate cancer. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Story for a lot of us. Yeah, yeah. I've heard you say the same thing. Yeah, yep, it is. same, same here. Heard the same story. All righty. Um, so uh, uh, I guess, uh, Dennis, uh, anything you want to comment on or talk about? Uh, yeah, I've, uh, relative to the subject we were just talking about, I need to concur that uh, since I've been on the ADT for a little over a year, uh, definitely the fatigue has gotten greater. I did the man plan, but the uh, the bands kept breaking on me, so I'm not doing the man plan. But I do I do play 18 holes of golf twice a week and uh, do walking on the other days for for exercise. And uh, but I have definitely grown uh, an abdominal. <laughs> situation that I never had in my lifetime. Yeah. Um, I can relate to that. So I you know my I either wear nice stretchy shorts or stuff or either that or buy a whole new wardrobe which I'm not into at seventy one years old so Yeah. yeah. I just I just deal with it. Hmm. Yeah as far as the you know the muscle wasting muscle wasting is in addition to fatigue, one of the more common side effects, and uh, really the only way to prevent that is by resistance exercise. So walking per se, golfing, uh, maybe a little bit, I guess, there, but the only way to really prevent muscle wasting is to actually do some resistance, which typically involves, uh, you know, either, either bands or weights or something where you're, you're pushing against either gravity or rubber bands or something. Um, so I, I've got a couple 10 pound weights, you know, just barbell weights, uh, one each hand and I do, oh, 60 or 80 reps uh, with my biceps and then triceps and deltoids every day with those. And I, I haven't really noticed a lot of muscle wasting in that particular area, but I have noticed it in my butt where my butt kind of used to be, uh, sitting higher than it is today, you know, so, but that could be gravity and age too. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, my yeah. my weakness is more wow. the lower body from the the hips, knees, and legs issue. Yeah. My upper body strength feels still feels pretty good. Um, it's just it's the lower part, especially when I've been sitting for a while or when I get up in the morning to get out of bed. It's a little difficult. Yeah, I mean that's the, you know you go to a personal trainer or something, and they work on very specific muscles. You know, Bill, um, Dennis, Dennis, when I get when I get you back when I get back to Tucson, 
I'm going to get you into a gym with a, a rowing machine because um, it may well help you a great deal. You, you'll be um, you'll be using a lot of that lower body, uh, as, as Steve will tell you. Uh, you'll be using your 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 thighs, um, your abs, um, and uh, you know your 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 kidneys. Uh, it's a good exercise. Uh, and if you can get into the habit of it, I mean, Steve, Steve does it pretty much every day, right, Steve? Yeah, I do, yes. I do about 45 minutes on the rowing machine. So, you know, it, it, it's a good alternative. It's one of the few exercises that may, in fact, actually mix um, resistance and aerobic at the same time because you're definitely getting resistance out of it for your lower body, and it, and it is aerobic. So you're... You're hitting two birds with one stone. So, you know, maybe um, I'll, when I, once I get back, I'll, I'll be back in the middle of June. I'll call you and maybe we'll go over to the gym or um, where do you play golf? Tucson National, is it? Yes, I have played there. <laughs> well, no, I, wherever you're a member, you know, maybe they have a rowing machine there and, and we, can, we can find a machine and, and I can... Help you out with that. Yeah, I've, so. I've got a rowing machine at my disposal here in our community, in our okay. we've got a okay. we've got a full fitness center here. So that's a good idea. I hadn't okay. thought about that. Okay, and well, I have to, done it in the past when I was younger, and, and actually did a lot of real rowing in a in a rowboat <laughs> when I was a lot younger. Okay. And, well, um, I've given Steve some coaching so he can testify how effective it is. So, uh, but I, I do think it could be a good alternative. Um, I, when I came in, somebody, and it wasn't Bill, there was somebody speaking before Bill, and, and I think uh, it was a younger was it a younger man that was complaining about fatigue, Steve? I think it might be Jim Harrington talking about anemia. Oh, right, okay. So, you know, it wasn't Jim, but I'm glad we covered the anemia issue with, 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 with Jim. Um, you know... It was Bill uh, talking about, about the thing. fatigue. It was Bill oh, was talking it? about the fatigue, so, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. And, and um, so you already covered the anemia issue with, with, with Jim, I guess, huh? Yeah, we Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I, I'm not going to... I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm sorry about all this background noise. I'll try and mute whilst I'm not um, leaving. Okay. All right, thanks. Uh, uh, it's much better, Rick, if you're muted. It's really a lot of noise in the background there at the airport. Um, so I guess, uh, Eric, you're there still, right? Eric? Yep, I'm here. So, Eric, you want to talk about anything? It uh, sounds like it's uh, sort of a lot of time today to talk. Yeah, well, I had bad news. Um, I had, on Saturday, I got an MRI of my uh, cervical spine, and they uh, found that it has spread to my cervical spine. So I now have metastases in, uh, in my neck as well as my back. And um, this particular one's in C7, and it causes a lot of pain in my shoulders and uh, back and arms, upper back and arms. I suspected that's what was going on, which was why I requested the MRI of my uh, cervical spine. And um, so I have an appointment with a radiologist. They're going to do a little spot radiation on it, see if they can shrink it so that I don't have any pain. Um, the trial that I'm on, um, the GS5829, um, that, that's going to end because it's not working anymore. And so they're talking about putting me on Sofigo. Uh, hmm. It was Rick's suggestion and the doctors agreed that that sounded like the proper course. Um, there are other options. There's um, an immunotherapy trial that's happening at UCSF, um, but it's, it's an early phase one and it requires that I go, go to San Francisco every day. So, um, and he still recommended that I try um, the Sofigo first anyway. 
Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'll see how that goes. Currently, um, I'm living on Norco. Hmm. So. How, how's your shortness of breath, Eric? Is that still persistent, or is that better? Yeah, it's still just as bad as it ever was. No one has any idea beyond hmm. that. You know, it could be the Lupron causing it. Um, I also have the wonderful thing I have osteonecrosis of the jaw, so I have a large piece of bone that's dissolving in my mouth. And that's caused by the Zometa, which right. they give you for osteoporosis, which you know, is one of those wonderful contradictory side effects. Yeah. So Eric, you know, on that score, um, the Zometa has a huge top line. And I think you've already reduced, you've gone down from six weeks to three months each shot, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Rick, I haven't had, had any um, in five months. In five months, okay. Um, what, what, uh, when are you going to get the spot radiation and what are your plans for Thursday? I'm going to go back to the same people that did the other two because you know, they have everything all set up already. I can take my mask in and um, yeah. they can start it pretty quickly. Okay. Are, are you going to still go away on Thursday or are you, have you, you going to defer that? Yeah, they all, they all told me to go away. There was no way I could get anything done before I was back anyway. So I'm going yeah, to go. I think that's a good I'm glad that you're going to go. I don't need to have an emergency appointment with the I have an emergency appointment with the periodontist tomorrow to see if he can smooth out the jagged bone that's in my mouth. Now you should know as a possible resource that Memorial Sloan Kettering has a, um, a, a cancer dentist program and. Um, I can't remember, I think it was Foodie that used it, I think it was Richard Foodie that used it, and the dentist that we saw said that she was always available and that she wanted to consult with her. Um, when I next get an internet connection, it's probably going to be a long time. Rick, I don't know what the address is. Hey, Rick, you're getting very hard. There's so much background chatter there, it's hard to find you. Okay. Um, I wonder if I take you. Hold on a minute. Can you go to a bathroom? Is any better? Uh, much better. Uh, much better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I I I I just took you off the Bluetooth. So um, what I'll do is when I get to London, I'll send you Eric. I'll send you the name in case you need to use this this lady as a resource. Uh, Foodie. Foodie was really impressed with it. Um, Len, do you know anything about the the dental backup for cancer at, at, uh, at Memorial Sun Kettering? No, sorry, Rick, I don't. Okay. Well, I've got a na I've got a name. Um, I've got a profile. I'll send it to you. I mean, the problem is that, that we found is that most of the dentists are really not too up on this um, O N J stuff. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll send it to you. How long are you gone for? Nine days. Okay. All right. Well, enjoy it and relax, and, and um, you know, hopefully you'll feel like a lot better when you come back. Um, and how many how many uh, spot radiations are they going to do for you? Oh, I don't know. I haven't even had the first one. But the, the other two times they did ten. Okay. 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 All right. And your house is gorgeous. I have to tell you, I was oh, I'm fortunate. Sorry, I, here to show you around. I was fortunate enough to drop my car off at Eric's house earlier on today, and uh, and and go from there to Oakland Airport, and it's it's a stunning old house. What year was it built, Eric? Nineteen twenty-nine. Oh, right. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. I think Stephen. I think Steve and I have to pay another uh, field visit to uh, to take a look. It was just down the ground. Look, just gorgeous, Eric. Just gorgeous. And I've jumped around. 
anybody that wants <laughs> that needs a place to stay in the Bay Area is welcome to stay. You know, one, other, one other thought I had around the osteonecrosis is, you know, you go to UCSF, right? Um, so yeah. I'm wondering if, uh, you know, the dental school there, uh, you said you're going to a periodontist, which seems like the right specialist, but I'm wondering if you could ask around the, if the, anyone at the dental school, any of the professors there have a particular interest in osteonecrosis, the jaw related to uh, either Zometa or... Uh, there may be yeah, some. I went there and was less than satisfied. You were okay. All right. Yeah. The doctor yeah. gave me two minutes. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem up there. But I thought maybe someone might have taken an interest in that and you know spent some time with you. Oh, uh, he took he took a uh, full jaw scan and said come back in six months. Yeah. yeah. Where was this, Eric? UCSF. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was at UCSF. Yeah, they. I had. Um, I got a referral to the people that are supposed to be the specialists in it, and he said, "Yeah." Oh, he he gave me another prescription for augmented, and you know, which is what I was on anyway. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, sorry to hear that. I mean, I hope maybe maybe this person could be a good resource for you because they're supposed to be. I know we're getting good reports on them. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry to hear that, Eric. Too, but uh, you know the radium two twenty three. You, I mean, if you've got increasing bone disease, I think that is certainly a reasonable way to go. And I, I took three doses of that. And words of wisdom I can give you if you choose to go on that is um, really watch your blood counts. And I would probably space them every six weeks to every four weeks personally if I did the other three doses because it's really hard on your marrow. Uh huh. Yeah, they also, I also haven't done Provenge yet, so that's another option. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I did Provenge, and it's, to me it's like chicken soup. I, I I don't know. I mean, I guess it works. It's hard to say, but it's it's a pain in the ass. That that for sure. You do it. Much, much more than than right. Eric, this is Jake. I, I have a question. Did you on the Zometa? Did you have dental work done, or did you just develop the L1J with for no reason? Oh, I had some teeth that weren't in very good shape to begin with, and okay. um, they wanted to pull the tooth, and then they didn't do it because of the zometa, and then they waited too long, and then when they finally pulled it, the, the bone had become necrophile. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah. yeah, apparently it's only like five, you know, five to ten percent of people on zometa get that issue, but you you apparently got the luck of the draw. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think well, antibiotics is the uh, you know the, the main uh, treatment. Yeah, right. that's. Yeah, good luck with that, my friend. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Good luck, Eric. With all. Okay. Uh, so we will just keep on work, working our way down this, Jim. Other than the uh, the hematocrit twenty seven or whatever, anything else going on? Did Did you ask for me? What? Yeah, Jim, I, is there anything else? We're just going down the list. I know we already yeah, talked about Yeah, that's okay. You talked about, we talked about anemia and cancer. Uh, no, no, I um, no, I think that's just the only thing. I, I mean, my PSA is still um, going down a bit, and so that's good news. And no, I, I think just the anemia I have to deal with, and you give me so many good suggestions. No, I I don't have anything else going on. I, As Rick has said many times, I'm one of those who don't make a lot of PSA. Um, good or bad is fact. Um, but no, there's the trial goes on, and I keep doing it, and we'll see what happens. And um, so far, it's not been bad. I mean, PSA goes down a bit. And, uh, I have no pain. I have to get more bone scans. I have one this week, and uh, CT scans. They're all part of the trial. They have to be done after four cycles of this thing. But uh, no, I have nothing to add tonight. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Uh, Lynn, I'm just going down the list. Anything on your mind? Uh, yeah, Steve. I have a question that I'm pretty confident you will be able to answer. Um, I had heard, I think it was just on uh, Inspire, um, so you know, not too much weight can be given to it, but someone said that if you take uh, Provenge, 
you may not be eligible for other immunotherapies down the line. I know you've had ProVenge. Did you ever hear or did they ever tell you that this might disqualify you for other immunotherapies? Uh, no, I think uh, it may disqualify you from uh, certain uh, uh, clinical trials looking at various uh, immunotherapies. In particular, the one I'm thinking about is PROSVAC, of course, which is hopefully going to be uh, released sometime this year. But I spoke to both Larry Fong and uh, the two oncologists I see at Kaiser Permanente, and neither of them felt taking ProVenge would cause me to not be able to get PROSVAC. Uh, and in the future, I, of course, I don't know. So, uh, you know, when something is released commercially, it's not, it's really up to the doctor's discretion. It's really around the clinical trials where the limitations are. Uh, Steve, I can answer that in part uh, because I'm on pembrolizumab, which is an immunotherapy drug, and ProVenge does not disqualify you from taking this uh, particular immunotherapy drug. Uh, the only thing that you cannot be on is you cannot be on Zofigo, and you cannot be on chemo. So no, it is, it's, it's quite fine, and you can go on and so forth. Okay, thanks. So maybe that helps. It's a, but it's a trial. Yeah, it's a trial. Yeah, and I did, yeah. I, did, I did ask that very specifically before I did the ProVenge because, uh, you know, I didn't want to have limitations on commercially available things uh, because I took the ProVenge. ProVenge is, you know, uh, if I had to do over again, I'm not sure I'd take it even. I, I don't know. You know, Steve, I know people have taken ProVenge twice. Hmm. I like it that uh, much. From, from the UK, yeah. and he comes over and he pays himself the ridiculous 90000 whatever it is, because it's not a drug that's been approved in the UK, apparently. And he's gone for a second round of uh, treatments, so he's had six of them. You know? Interesting. Yeah, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think it's so much that it hasn't been approved, but logistically, I don't think you could probably get it back and forth to the UK in time. I think that's the issue. They they would need a local lab in order to Yeah, I don't know how he I don't know how he did that, Rick, but he came he came from the UK to New Jersey. So he's not going very far in the US. Right. And uh, whether right. he, he yeah, whether he stayed here for the treatments, I, I don't know. But I was surprised that first of all if somebody's gonna pay for this themselves and number two, he's gone around a second round. I don't know if yeah. it worked or not. Yeah, I actually well, Interestingly, it was not ninety; it's one hundred and thirty thousand now. It is. Oh, yeah, oh my was, is that right? Pay any of that, but that's what Kaiser was built. Right, right. Um, hmm. I was talking to Nigel earlier on today, who saw Chuck Ryan, and um, they're still waiting on the prospect. They still don't have. Um, and I mean, the irony is they don't have enough people that have deceased. But sometimes, when that happens, they just call the trial off. And they and they do an early the FDA gives an early approval and that's that's going to be quite possible. I mean, that, I could see that happening. But, well, you know, it also implies that not enough people are dying in the control group, though, uh, Rick, and that doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? So I could see in the experimental group where they're getting the prospect, but the people not getting the prospect, yeah, you're right, living longer too. So I I don't know. I, I don't know how to interpret that. I, I think it's going to be any month now. Yeah. yeah, I I I don't know. I don't know. You could be right. I don't know if it's in the control group or in the uh, in in the other group. I'm going to mute yeah. again. What I, what I found over the years is that one way to track whether a drug is going to be a release of blockbuster is to look at the drug company producing it. And in this case, it's Bavarian Nordic, which is a small company in Scandinavia. And if you see that stock bounce, and it has been bouncing, it's bounced about. It's gone up from. 12 to 18, 17, 18 in the last month or two. If you start to see a bounce like that, there's somebody inside there that knows what's going on. So we'll see. I have a feeling just from the big bounce we've been seeing in the last month or two, there's going to be a release. Well, in that case, it would be uh, illegal insider trading. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But it happens all the time. If you can, it happens all the time. All the time. I happen to have some stock in the Bavarian Nord, but it's not because I'm an insider. I figure if they do good, I do good, you know? <laughs> what, uh, Steve, what is the drug you're talking about? What is it they make? Uh, uh, Prosvac. Prosvac. Oh. Is yeah. it immunotherapy? Yeah, what is it's it? a vaccine. It's a vaccine. Oh, vaccine. Oh, okay. But it's actually oh, at... off the shelf more where, uh, oh. you know, 
you have to go through and extract your own blood and all this stuff. So, oh, okay. uh, and they've been talking about this phase three trial now and, and being complete. You know, the first was going to be the beginning of the year and there's a middle of the year. Now they're saying maybe the end of this year, but they're mm -hmm. very close. Uh, they need another 300 events, which are by, by and large deaths in this large group of yeah. men that were on it. Well, they're looking at overall survival. Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, and it was, I think, I think 1,700 men or something originally. So it was a large, pretty large group. But I'm just, I'm just pointing this out, that their stock has taken a pretty good bounce in the last couple of months. So I think yeah, remember, remember Dendrion's stock when Provenge came out? Boy, that thing went way up, you know, and could have made a lot of money, I guess. But Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> and, 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 and by the way, too. but by the way, I think that Bavaria Nordic was bought by Bristol Myers. I think they hold the. Uh, I'm pretty certain they hold the uh, the controlling interest in Bavaria Nordic now. Yeah, the distribution is Bristol Myers Squid, exactly. But Bavaria Nordic yeah. still owns the drug, but the distribution will be through uh, uh, Bristol Myers Squid, right? Anyway, uh, so so it goes. Um, so, Paul, Frida, anything that you has on your mind? Uh, I don't know. I, I, my blood tests, I continually get uh, three of my, uh, um, it's, it starts with an M, uh, are low. And uh, my, my oncologist doesn't seem to be too worried about it, but I know that if I, when, I, when I get to the uh, chemo stage, that that will become a problem. Um, is it unusual to have have the, those numbers low early on while you're on ADT? Yeah, it starts with M, as in as in my test. That, you know, it's like it's, I think one of them is hemoglobin, and and, and M, uh, it's just three letters, uh, and there's three of them, and I and they're continually low. Um, let's see if I can find. Uh, I, I sh I'm not prepared, so I, I don't have them. But anyway, consistently in uh, my blood tests for you know, for the last uh, six or nine months, uh, they, they've come out low. But again, like I say, my oncologist seems to wave it off and not be, not be overly concerned. I think the last, the last thing um, the, uh, the, the um, nurse practitioner said to me was, uh, you're probably not getting enough iron. But uh, that surprises me because I do get a lot of, um, a lot of meat in my diet. Um, so I should have, I should have plenty of iron, but and I also eat a lot of salads where where you should get some iron too. Yeah, so, I, I put a lot of weight into a nurse practitioner telling you to eat more iron. Yeah, you know when you got cancer, I, you know that's probably not the reason for the anemia more than likely. But I, I don't know what the M test other than myelocytes, which is a type of white blood cell. I don't know what the M word might be, but it's either your red blood cell line, your white blood cell line, or your platelets. Those are the three things. I could go, oh, you know, before chemo. Before chemo. If you give me just a second, I can go out to uh, my Quest Diagnostics and look at my, uh, I can look, look at it. Hold on, just take me a second. You can go on to somebody else and then you come back to me. Okay, Paul, that's good. Thanks. So, uh, Peter, you had a colonoscopy this morning. How did that go? <laughs> Went pretty slick. Yeah, I'm telling you, I've had a couple no of those. Problems. I, I did it because I, yeah, I think you guys, no, we tested. They came back that I had Lynch syndrome. No, uh, yeah. yeah. they told me to start doing it every year. Okay, I don't mind doing it. This is my first one. I, I had one six years ago, so I'm okay. So a couple of things new with me is uh, to, to kind of respond to a couple of comments other people have made. <clears throat> um, I was on ADT for 18 months, uh, six months or yeah, uh, then I had surgery, then a, a break, and then a 12-month period. And I finished that. My last Lupin shot was uh, last September, and that was a three-month shot. So in December, it ran out. Um, and then I stopped everything up until now. And up until now, my blood test has been coming back undetectable, and my... Uh, my testosterone has been zero. However, Monday I took a test, and good, uh, great for me. And I was feeling it was coming back already, but my testosterone jumped back up to 210 uh, after being at zero for almost a year and a half. Huh. So 
So I was kind of happy about that. And my PSA only, you know, just went up a you know, one one hundredth there, it went up from 0.03 to 0.04. But it was enough for my oncologist to kind of perk up his ears and let me know that, hey, uh, we're going to keep a closer eye on this thing. Maybe he was alarmed at the, um, at the testosterone going up. I don't know. But he said instead of doing PSA every two months, we're going to go to once a month again. Hmm. Um, so it's to me, finally have some strength back. And someone mentioned, uh, I think it was Bill Franklin, that he's younger. And, uh, and hopefully it'll come back. I'm 69. I'm going to be 70 in a, in a couple of months. And, uh, and it's great to know that your testosterone can come back after four months. I was wondering. Um, so it's a good feeling there. I'm just uh, got my fingers crossed. I get some kind of durable remission out of this. <laughs> don't go, don't go south sometime in the near future. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'll just keep a steady eye on it and, and watch it. Um, it sure does feel better going to the gym. You know, I'm not dragging myself anymore, and I'm out paddling. And a couple of times last week, I'm going tomorrow, and just, I just feel strong and vigorous. And um, makes makes you think a little bit about, you know, if things come back, whether to jump on loop from the game again, and you know, whether to go back through that formality. But uh, I'll, I'll cross that when I come to it. Yeah, you got uh, the other. The other thing I wanted to mention. I came in when uh, when the, this Jim Harrington was talking about the uh, the anemia. I, I don't have anemia. My red blood cells down around 10 or 9.8 or something like that. So it's not terrible. It's, it's just really in the low end. It's been that way ever since I was on uh, ADT. And I tried going to I tried going to health food stores. I tried talking to people. My, my general practitioner about you know, whether I should take iron, whether I should take supplements, and I tried that, but it, it just didn't budget. Just, just didn't seem to do anything by supplementing my uh, my iron in terms of the, the wasn't I wouldn't call it anemia. It was just low level, you know, kind of borderline anemia or low. You know, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't debilitating. It was enough to concern me, but I could never get anything to uh, make a change in it. You know what? What this is, Jim. Um, what will make a change is a transfusion, but whether you can get that or not, but that'll raise your, your hemoglobin, um, as Steve said, um, and it should last for a while. But that would pump you up. I mean, it sure did me, and feel a lot better. But you got to figure out how to get a transfusion. And Rick, Rick and I, yeah, Rick and I have a friend in um uh, in the Bay area. No, he used, I don't know where he is on, on his uh, chemo at this point, but he used to get transfusions every every three weeks or so. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, that's what's been happening to me. And I, how long did that go on? I, for, for months and months. Oh. It lasted for about three weeks and then he had another one. So it didn't, yeah. didn't have real durability to him, but it sure perked him up and helped him Oh, out. but that's for sure. I mean, I just, I, it's like watering a flower. Boom, you know. I mean, I could feel it the same night. It was quite remarkable. Um, but, I mean, that, that's a way to do it. But, yeah, I, I can't imagine continuing to do that. Um, I don't know what a, what's a blood transfusion cost. I, I'd, I hate to have to think about to pay for this. Uh, I have no idea what the out of, the, if you had no insurance at all, what it would be. But it's a commonly yeah. done procedure. I mean, the more... more yeah, the right. issue is, is where do you get the blood? You know, there's not enough donors. And if you have something like yeah. that, that's not a problem. But if you have O neg or B neg or something, it's very hard to find a donor, actually. So it's not a sustainable solution. You don't want to get much. That's right. That's right. I, I agree with you. That's why. Yeah. So uh, uh, Paul just actually posted on the chat line there that the, t the test you're talking about is an MCV, which is mean corpuscular volume. Uh, so mean corpuscular volume means the corpuscle, red corpuscles means red cells, and mean means the average, and volume means obviously volume. And typically these things are used in the CBC. If you have small cells, a low MCV, usually below 80, it means uh, one of a couple things, but iron deficiency anemia 
is the most common reason. Uh, if you have very large cells, oftentimes it's called megaloblastic anemia, and it's related to folic acid deficiency or B12 deficiency sometimes. Um, but there's different types of nutritional anemias, and uh, you know they, they can be defined by the size of the red blood cells. So a low MCV that Paul was, I think, alluding to, and that's why the nurse practitioner said take some iron, can, it can also be seen in chronic anemia of any disease. Your, your marrow is just not producing enough hemoglobin uh, in the red cells, and so you get small cells. So it's pretty nonspecific. It's not something that you can hang your hat on. And that's as much hematology as I know as, from a, as a gynecologist. <laughs> well, does that mean I can't have a blood? I, I can't have chemo if, if if it stays that way. No, it has nothing to do with chemo. The important things with chemo are the hemoglobin, and that's usually abbreviated HGB, and the hematocrit, which goes along with that, and that's usually abbreviated HCT. And then most important is the white blood cell count. And the most important white blood cell count is called the ANC, the absolute neutrophil count. And that should be at least 1,500 in order to have chemo. And then the other important one is platelets, which is a clotting factor. And your platelets need to be, their normal is over 200, 300,000, but you have to have at least 50,000 platelets in order to uh, usually to start the chemo. So those are the three things they look at. MCV, it's used when you're working up why somebody is anemic. That's how it's used. MCV, that's the... Uh... That's the volume, that's the size of the red blood cells. And that has to be, that has to be within range? No, not for chemo. No, not at all. If you have, no, it's not, it's, it's only related to the type of anemia you have. Like I said, you can have a low MCV and it's oftentimes iron deficiency. A high MCV could be other types of deficiencies like folic acid. But if your hemoglobin is relatively normal above, let's say, 10, you're probably fine. It doesn't it didn't really matter. And, yeah, my hemoglobin uh, is 12. Yeah, so a low MCV in, this, in the presence of a hemoglobin at 12 doesn't have too much significance. I mean, if it were really, now, you know, it should be between 80 and 100. If it's way below 80, if it's 60 or something, then you may have some weird thing going on, some type of anemia where a hematologist has to really kind of think, think about that one. My but MCV is... 79.4 is just below, yeah. just below 80. So, so basically 80. So yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's that's no big deal. And the reason the nurse practitioner said take some iron is typically when you see a low MCV, it's related to the iron. But usually they work it up by getting an iron level and something called a total iron binding capacity, TIBC. And if those yeah. things indicate iron deficiency, that's when you advise iron. You wouldn't advise iron just for a low MCV. It's so common. And yours isn't even low. Yeah, 79 point something is fine. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. Just if your hemoglobin is up there, I wouldn't worry at all. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So we're moving down here. Uh, uh, I guess we're up to me. So I've got just a brief thing that's going on with me, which is, uh, I don't know what to say about it uh, exactly. Um, I, uh, so my PSA is starting to climb again on the enzalutamide. I've been on enzalutamide about eight or almost nine months now. And it's gone from eight to 8.1 to 10. And the last one I got this last week was 12. And uh, so they're talking about, well, maybe we'll go and switch over to abiraterone um, because you kind of run the course for enzalutamide. Um, but in the meantime, I, I did a, a testosterone and a DHT, a dihydrotestosterone. And interestingly, the, the testosterone is less than 20. It's castrate level. But the dihydrotestosterone is 60-something, 60 67, I think, which is about half of what you might expect in a normal man. So it's a little high. It's a little high. So I've been talking to my oncologist the uh, last few days, and uh, they can't quite figure out why that is. Uh, Dihydrotestosterone, DH, is about 10 times more potent than testosterone at the end organ level. So it's very, very, a very potent androgen. And so finally what they came up with, well, let's start you on Abidart. And Abidart is used for men with benign prostatic hypertrophy. 
because uh, it, it prevents testosterone being converted to DHT. It blocks an enzyme. And then they decide to go to monthly Lupron instead of every three months in case for some reason it wears down after a couple of months. So that's the latest with me. I don't know. It, it could be just disease progression, too. I had a CT scan the abdomen and pelvis, and it showed no progression at all. So it showed the same as it did uh, about nine, ten months ago. So I don't know. In the meantime, I feel pretty good, and uh, I'm just kind of I'm going to Hawaii in a few weeks, and uh, I'm just going to live my life here and not worry about it. But I'm starting on Avodart, which is kind of unusual to see if I can block that formation of the DHT, which is pretty high for some weird reason. And the other interesting thing is, you know, I had no beard since I've been on ADT. I mean, I, I, nothing near as heavy as it used to be. I don't have to shave maybe once a week or less. And over the last few months, I've noticed I have to shave more. So that's interesting. I, I, and I can't, nobody can quite explain why this is all going on. That's usually, my two that, that's usually a testosterone thing, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially a DHT thing. Absolutely. It's stimulating the hair follicles in your face. So it all goes together, but and my test and my PSA has risen a little bit. For me, that's you know, I my my PSA was a thousand when I started, so twelve isn't too bad, but it's okay. certainly like, go down, not up, that's for sure. Wow. But uh, uh, I don't know. Steve, Steve, if you, if you're um, you're taking Xtandi now, but never, you've not tried Zytika, is that right? What you said? I'm taking uh, enzalutamide, which is Xtandi, and I'm not taking right and. And, it, and, they, and that's working okay, the uh, Xtandi for the moment, and Salutamine. Yes, I've had a pretty good run. I've been on it for about nine months. And my, oh, good. And, and while I've been on it, I, of course, had Provenge and, and three doses of radium as well. And, um, mm. and my, my PSA has been progressively dropping from, it was around 40 or so after my last chemo, and it's over the last uh, year or so, it's dropped down to eight, which is, seems to be the eight year. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, you know, you, you still have Zytiga to go, so to speak, right? I mean, assuming that um, yeah. if, if you fail in salutamide, I mean, I, I failed them both in a period of about six months each. Um, by the way, I've taken Avidart for years. I to just keep, to keep giving it to me. It has a nice side effect, and that is it grows hair. Do you know that uh, President Trump is supposedly takes his stuff to keep his hair? Looking <laughs> good. Hair on your head. <laughs> what, is that right? <laughs> I don't yeah, want that's to what look. I hear. Yeah, I mean, now, um, I mean, I have a full head of hair. I don't know how much it is, but there is this known effect. And I'm just when you're talking about shaving and so forth. But I find no, um, no ill effects from Avidart. Or uh, I take finasteride, which is just another version of it. Right, um, right. And whether it helps me or doesn't help me, I have no idea. But it sure doesn't hurt me. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to start it because this DHT is higher than I wanted, and uh, and nobody can quite explain why on Lupron it is, but. I'm going to start it, and uh, and I'm going to go to the monthly Lupron instead of the every three months. That that was one of my oncologists said that she had a patient where it just kind of didn't last for three months, and so she just started giving it monthly. So yeah, so I'm I've heard I've heard that monthly shots can be better, but I don't. I get a three month shot, but I have heard that. Good luck. Well, it's I mean it hurts. I mean I, I must say the Lupron when I take it, my ass is sore for a couple of days. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I go for my three month, they ask me which cheek I want this thing in, and I figure, geez, it's been three months by now. I'm fine, you know. And but that's yeah. right. I find that they need to put it higher up in the in more in the muscle, maybe, and it doesn't seem to be quite as sore. But who knows? You know. You know, it's curious. Yeah. Every, this is Jake. Everybody talks about getting it in her butt. My my oncologist has always given me Lupron in my arm. <clears throat> really? In your arm? Really? My, in the muscle, you know, the meaty part of my shoulder. Yeah. Oh. I've never heard that. Yeah. Is that, does it cause pain or no? Um, well, it hurts when it goes in. Yeah, and then yeah. it feels, you remember, you know, if you remember in high school when you played a stupid game where you punch each other in the arm yeah. 10 times in a row, it, it kind of hurts like that for a day or two. And then after that, it's no problem. Interesting. Yeah, they always get it. Because it's a big awesome. needle. I mean, you know. Yeah, it is. And, and it does hurt going in and it does hurt for a day or two, but. I don't know. She never even suggested my butt. <laughs> well, I, I think most times it's, it is given in the gluteal muscle. Uh, but, you know, I'm figuring, well, maybe if it's once a month, it won't be as big a needle and it won't be. The reason it hurts is it's thick, it's thick like mayonnaise. It's, it looks like mayonnaise. You know, I've, I've actually right. used to give it to my own patients for various reasons, Lupron, and it's, it looks like mayonnaise, you know. 
So it's hard to push in there, and then I'm sure it's, you know, it causes some damage to the muscle fibers and so on. But maybe if it's once a month, maybe it's not quite so thick. I don't know. Yeah, you may be right. Yeah, the one I got was, was every four months. So. Yeah, I don't know. I'll see. I mean, it's a... Uh, I don't really relish going in every month getting an injection. Uh, I, I do take Exgeva, you know, uh, but I give that to myself, so I don't have to go in for that. So right. It's a pain in the ass to go into the injection clinic because you got all these people getting the flu shot and everything else, and they're sick, and I hate to go there. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so, anyway, do you, so that's do you have any, any, any problems with Exgeva, or are you, you fine with it stuff? I've been on it for six cycles, and I'm trying to talk my docs into going to every eight weeks instead of every four weeks, but they don't want to do that. They said there's no evidence yeah. that, that you can do it to know some that. But, uh, uh, but no, I, I must say, you know, listening to Eric is kind of scary because there is, you know, osteonecrosis of the jaw is a very serious side effect, and, uh, you know, he's worried about it. Uh, fortunately, my dentist is a guy I play tennis with, and I've gone to see him every six months and I, you know, I've seen him twice since I started and he does, you know, an exam and says you're fine. So I, I don't know. I, but I haven't felt anything. No, I, I get the shot and I'm, I'm fine. Well, LNJ apparently is, is usually only when you have, uh, I always thought anyway, it was only uh, occurred when you had uh, uh, an extraction, <clears throat> you know, a filling or a, even a root canal um, generally does not cause any problems unless you have underlying jaw disease in the first place. That's always been my understanding. And it's and, it, and even then it's like five or ten percent at the most. I think five percent. Yeah, yeah. So but it's like, a scary complication. Uh, and the longer you're on these drugs, uh, the more likely, you know, when you say five percent, it's additive every year. So. Well, right. Yeah. I, I it makes me nervous too because I've been on it for five years, or so will be five years in June. And then yeah. I hear about Eric and I said, Oh shit. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. The, you know, I don't, and and then whether Exgeva versus uh, Zometa, I, I I don't know. They work completely differently. Yeah. So I don't know if there's uh, one preference over the other. The reason I'm on Exgeva is because uh, I could give it to myself, and that seemed like avoiding a trip into the clinic to get a shot or something. Right. Yeah, I think I think my doctor likes the Zometa because I have to come in every month for a, for a infusion, and right. uh, and that's good money for her. Yeah, I think that's true. For whereas the Exgeva, you just give us a sub Q shot in your abdomen, and it's, they can teach anybody to do that, just like insulin, and so it's really easy. Yeah, I get the uh, I get the Exgeva in the arm, and uh, now they pushed it back every two months. Uh, but I was on Prolea, and they decided to switch me off that. I don't know what the difference is. I, I think the Exgeva is be stronger, but I have no trouble with my teeth. So, so far, Prolea so good. is exactly the same. They're both called denosumab. And yeah. Prolia is exactly the same as Exgeva, but it's used for breast cancer. So oh, okay. the exact same drug. But, there, you know, okay. I've been arguing with my oncologist as to maybe I could go to eight weeks instead of four weeks. You know, and they say now there's just no evidence to go to, you know, less than every four weeks. So how did you manage to go to every eight weeks? Yeah, I don't know. I think they just felt that it wasn't, yeah, that's a good question, um, that it wasn't uh, that important that I, I um I could go on every two months, uh, but never really discussed it much, but it seemed fine with me, uh, although it was just an injection. But you're right, every time I have to go to the Cancer Institute, I've got to go into the chemo area, talk about the pressing, and then wait in, wait in line and get this shot. And, um, yeah, it's a real pain in the ass. I mean, cause I obviously can't give it to myself. But the Prolia, one thing about Prolia was it's a six-month shot, as I remember. And no, uh, that's pretty no, – well, no, is that just – Prostate cancer, no, it, that's different. That's when it's used in breast cancer. In prostate oh, okay. cancer, okay. every four weeks. Um, okay. Actually, you, you can give it yourself. I mean, you oh. you can just just prescribe a 25-gauge syringe and show me how to give it, and I'll give it myself. It's no big deal. Oh, okay. Oh, but really, okay. if you're not a medical person, it's, you know, diabetics do this all the time, you know? Yeah, that's but, true. Or I could have my wife help me, but that, I never thought about that, but that's... Uh, it's a good suggestion. Yeah, they that's you know they just prescribe a twenty five gauge syringe and once a month they pick up the medication it needs oh. to be kept in a fridge and then they just okay. get it. And it's no big deal at all. And you know, uh, you know that the 
Zometa has its infusion, so you can't do that. You're not going to start your own IV. That'd be like a Michael Jackson thing. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, but that's a good suggestion, though. I is it is an expensive drug, Exchiva, or is it? Do you have any ideas? Or, yeah. I know I'm insured, insured, so I probably don't care. But yeah, I think it's fifteen dollars a dose or something like that, somewhere. Oh, in that okay, <clears throat> okay. Sure. Well, I think well, that's, that's one of the, that's I think that's one of the things about the the Zometa. Um, because it's older, and I have I'm on a generic now. I think my my charge is nine hundred thirty nine dollars. Mm. Total charge. Now look at it this way. Look at this way, gentlemen. Uh, look at this way, gentlemen. Uh, Pembrolizumab is twenty thousand dollars each time. And, uh, oh yeah. yeah. So in comparison, I mean, look at look at the ads on TV. This is made by Merck and for Keytruda, and the magazines and ads. I mean, this is going to okay. cure the world of cervical cancer. Three months longer. Yeah, I know. It's like. Uh, I saw her time on TV. Yeah, you bet. You, Optivo and Ke, you know Keytruda and you know, yeah, yeah, all of those drugs. All of them. And they 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 make this implication that that this is much better than chemo. It will give you a durable remission and uh, and blah 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 for certain types of lung cancer and skin cancer. But um, interesting. But it's Merck. I mean, they got lots of money, right? So it's all of them. It's not just Merck. It's uh, it's Merck Sharp. You know, it's it's uh, yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah, but they're sure advertising, and it sounds real good. Yeah, well, then, of course, Keytruda's. You know, it's non-small cell lung CA is the target disease, mm -hmm. and they're competing Keytruda with Optivo for primary oh. treatment you know, before you get chemo. And so oh. there's a big battle going on in the pharmacy world right now, which is going to be predominant. Both mm -hmm. are incredibly expensive, as you can imagine. So, yeah, you know yeah. that's. The world of uh, finance. That's the way it goes. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, we we'll go. I guess Sylvester Mann, are you there? Yes, I'm here, but I don't have anything at this time. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks for participating. Anyway, uh, and I saw Tom. He, Tom's the only one brave enough to be putting up himself on a webcam. Uh, <laughs> Tom, are you still there? Yeah. You look like you walked out of the room on us. Tom Van Zandt, are you still there? He was on a webcam and then just walked out probably to go pee just a few minutes ago. Right. We do have somebody on the phone again, Steve, to join. It looks like somebody else, somebody else might be on the phone as well. Yeah. Somebody on the caller number seven. Somebody join on the phone in the last five minutes or so? That might be Rick. That might still be Rick. It might, it, it might have been me. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm just trying. Yeah, it's you. It's it me. Sorry. Yeah. You dropped off I, I'm, and I'm came now back. sitting on the airplane, so I, I'm just coming in and out as I can. To yeah, you dropped right. off, and then we, and now you're back. Okay, cool. All right, well, safe travels. Safe travels, Rick. Hey, hey Steve. Uh, this is Len. Um, getting back to your DHT issue, um, th the reason why guys like uh, Snuffy Myers and Stephen Strum have long been advocating the triple blockade, which includes uh, DHT blockade from uh, uh, Tasteride or Avidart, is because they quote studies that were done in vitro at least, where um, just on EDT alone, DHT levels in the cell uh, may decline down to 70 or 65 percent of normal but with the uh, dutasteride, uh, they, the DHT levels drop to like, uh, let, well, down to about 7% of normal. Yeah, yeah. I've actually, so, I've done, since I did this, I found this, I've done some reading about it, and there, there's no question that uh, DHT is, you know, testosterone is converted to the end organ, either the skin or the, the prostate, into DHT. So, it could be a problem. I mean, if if it's not being yeah. suppressed, so I, I'm definitely going on the Avidard. I I'm not a big fan of Snuffy Myers, but I, I think he has something you know to say about this one. Right. Well, how much longer are they going to leave you on the Extandi, Steve, or are you going to go to the to the Zytiga soon? Well, I'm gonna you know uh, I just sort of made my own decision. I'm gonna stay on it for another month, go to Hawaii, enjoy myself because I have no side effects at all on the uh, enzalutamide. I mean, I feel fine, honestly. And so I figured I'm not going to start something new. You know, my whole family's going. You know, the whole, yeah. we got a, a nice house. You know, we're going to enjoy ourselves. And 
and then I'm going to get back. I'm going to do another blood level and see where I am. And at that point, I guess I, I go on the abiraterone. But, you know, there's only about a 30%, 30% of men who are resistant to enzalutamide actually do well on the abiraterone. So there's a lot of cross resistance to the two. And the, but the other thing I'm thinking, you know, remember when we heard Sam Denmi talk about uh, bipolar androgen therapy, BAT? Yep. I'm going to try to talk my docs into going with that instead of going back on the chemo. Because, man, I'll tell you, I, I just did my first acupuncture for peripheral neuropathy again today because it just continues to get worse. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I really don't want to go back on chemo unless I just got nothing left to, to do, you know. Yeah, but Steve, I mean, I have to say that you've got to give that interludamide a little more chance. I mean, I know that you've gone from 8 to 12. Um, I know that you've gone from 8 to 12, but yeah. you've just got to see um, you've got to see more of a pattern before you start um, before you start switching. I mean, you've got to try and milk as much as you can out of out of each drug. Yeah, and yeah. you know, while, while switching, uh, and then you, you've done pretty well on interludamide. How long have you been on it? About eight months now, almost nine. I mean, that's that, yeah, that's not failing interludamide. I mean, that that that. I don't know what the average time is, but you know, you get eight months to a year out of out of a drug, and it's keeping you low. I mean, you, you certainly haven't accelerated. So, I mean, my if it were me, I wouldn't be so I wouldn't be so quick to um the switch what what was your dht level 67 67 wow yeah it's not normal. It's not well it's you know 106 is the low end of normal so it's about a little bit more than half of normal yeah but you know the dht is usually a percentage of your testosterone well testosterone so is like usually you know and your testosterone is at castrate level, so it's usually 10%. The DHT should be around 10%. For in a healthy man, DHT should be about 10% of your of your regular level. So you yeah, should be looking be, around. Yeah, then it should be around two. The last time I had it done, it was I think 12. So it's gone up from 12 to 67. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, but your testosterone is still below 20. Yes. 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 That's odd. Um, it is. Yeah, I mean, oncologists are kind of scratching their heads on this one. They didn't know what to make out of it. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah. the inventory will do the trick. Well, I'm going to go for it. And, and Rick, I, I agree with you. I'm not going to get off the enzalutamide until I have to, but um, I'm certainly going to stay another month and see where everything is. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, well any moment, I, if I disappear... I'll say good night to you now. I just think if I have to cut off the cut off the line and make you stop the cell phones. But uh, how, right, are, right. how many guys? How many guys do we have on the call tonight, Jake? Uh, uh, about ten, maybe. Yeah, I didn't okay. count them. But I just two, three, four, five. About ten or eleven. Great. And 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 uh, anybody new? Do we have anybody new tonight? No. Nobody has been here before. Okay. All old timers. All right. we, <clears throat> Steve, you, from what I've heard, Steve, you're doing a great job. I, 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 I may uh, draft you in uh, even when I'm there. Be careful. Don't do too good a job. <laughs> uh, safe travels, Eric. Safe travels. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Thanks. All right, guys. I'll say good night to you all, and um, with a bit of luck, I'll be on the call. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to moderate the call next Tuesday. I'm, I'm hoping. So if not, I'll be in touch with you. But I'm looking to do it. That Tuesday call is a great call, man. It's only on, it's only at 11 p.m. my time and, and, and not 1, 1 a.m. So uh, I like that Tuesday call. <laughs> Have a good right, trip, okay. Rick. Thanks. Take care. Yeah, bye, bye. bye, everybody. Bye, bye guys. Bye-bye. So, Tom, you had stepped away from the, from your uh, webcam screen, Tom Van Zandt. So you're the last on our list here. We thought anything going on that uh, you'd like to talk about? You're on mute, I think. I see your lips moving, but I don't hear your hear your voice. <laughs> Is anyone else hearing him? No. 
Yeah, Tom, I think you got to go off mute. You're on mute. The microphone's on mute. Hit the little microphone icon if it's red and go to green. Can you hear us, Tom? I don't yeah, think he... I finally got it. There you go. I had, there you I go. had some other windows open, and uh, it was tough. It was tough. <laughs> but I, I'm doing fine. I was just listening in. I, I went back on my uh, full dose of uh, Extandy, and I'm doing much better and due to see the oncologist next month. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, I think uh, what time we have a six thirty. So uh, if unless there's anything else anybody has on their mind, why don't we call an early evening and everybody enjoy the rest of their night here? Anybody else? Hi. Uh, yeah, I have a quick question. <clears throat> I'm also on Extandy. I've been on it now for four months. This is Jake. I've been on it for four months. Uh, I think it's four months. And recently, I've been getting, I've been breaking out like in a, in a rash in hives um, when I eat different kinds of foods. You know, things that I was never allergic to in the past. I talked to the uh, to the uh, pharmacist, and they said that enzalutamide does not usually cause allergic reactions. And I was just wondering if anybody else experienced a sensitivity to new foods or that they were never previously sensitive to. I'm going to an, uh, to an allergist this this Thursday, and I guess they're going to do that stupid patch test where they stick you with 55 things yeah. on your back. But. Yeah, you know, I, I've been on it about eight, nine months. I, I can't say I've experienced any of that. Hmm. How about you, Tom? Uh, no. no, I haven't had any problems. Okay, well... Yeah, I mean, it could be unrelated, too. You know, sometimes you take something and you think you have to blame it, but it could be something unrelated. Well, it's just that, you know, I never had any problems all my life. You know, the only thing I knew I was, I was you know, was allergic to was penicillin. And, you know, I could eat anything and, and uh, you know, grass didn't bother me. Nothing bothered me pretty much other than poison ivy, of course. Um, yeah. But now suddenly I'm just, I, break, I, I ate a pear about a month ago and I broke my whole arm broke out in a rash and hives um, then I ate an apple the other day and the same thing happened and I think cinnamon might be a, a sensitivity thing I, you know, I'm trying to keep a track and, and watch what what's causing it but it's just weird you know that all of a sudden at age yeah. 63 I, I developed these sensitivities and I, yeah. the only thing I could think of is is the new you know the, the new drug yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I've read through the uh, side effects of enzalutamide pretty carefully, the yeah, most so serious I. one of seizures, and I, I don't say I remember seeing food allergies as a side effect. Uh, I don't know. Well, somebody mentioned, right, I have too, and, and, and you're right, I don't, there's no mention of it whatsoever. You know, it's funny, though, they did say that half of the people during the test were on uh, glucocorticoid, and they allowed <clears throat> they allowed them to stay on it, <clears throat> so you know, like prednisone or something. So, it, which strikes me as kind of weird. Uh, you know, I mean, we know that's that's used definitely for Zytiga, uh, right. and but it's not required for for uh, um, Extandy. But they said probably almost fifty percent of this of the study people were were on glucocorticoids and were allowed to stay on it. <clears throat> so. Yeah. That's uh, strange. I, I don't know why they're probably on it for some unrelated reason. I, I think it must have been, yeah. But I'm just wondering, you know. And they, I, I did talk to somebody, or I read somewhere that that it could be in the my immune system has been suppressed by the uh, yeah the, the Lupron and the and the enzalutamide, and maybe what used to never bother me now does. Does that make sense? Could that be a possibility? Do you think, Steve? You know, I, I don't know. I think you're doing the right thing by going to an allergist. Uh, it, it's a little, it's weird. I, I don't, I don't think that's right. No, I don't think that your immune system being suppressed would result in you having an allergic reaction to something. But I mean, I'm no allergist, and right. I think you're 
right thing to go to an allergist. And they may not do skin testing for food allergies like that. They may or may not. So. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah. the thing is, it's working for me right now. I've been on a my, – my PSA got up to 15.5, and this last time it was down to 0. 0.7, which is – Wow, almost, that's really good. Yeah, it's, that's almost as low as I've ever been on anything. The yeah, no, that's, that's a good drop. That's a really good drop, yeah. Yeah, so yes. I, want to, I want to stick with it if I can. Oh, yeah, I just don't need any pairs. I mean, what can you say? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I thought, I thought I'd take a shot because I know you and, and Tom hadn't been on the last week or two when I mentioned it. Yeah, so. yeah, no, I, I certainly haven't experienced anything like that. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, gentlemen. Take care of yourselves, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Good night, Good everyone. Night. Good night. Good night.